you've ever set up a Python project, you know how painful it can be when you're in dependency hell. Maybe we've even personally spent hours trying to resolve a dependency conflict. Well, today we're gonna go over what it actually means to pip install a package. What I'm gonna show you today should be able to help you fix most of the dependency errors you're gonna encounter in your day to day. I've got the script up in my PyCharm here and it's gonna be printing out the weather in the South Pole for us today. So let's go and run that. And we get a module not found error, cannot find module name requests. And it shouldn't be that surprising because PyCharm was underlining the important red. So we should have known this was gonna happen. So if we open up a terminal, we can do pip install requests. And that's gonna go and install the request library. And if we look up here, PyCharm was able to detect that the library is now installed. So the red underline is gone. And now when we run this code, we see that the temperature in the South Pole is negative 40. So it's pretty cold today. Not that windy though. It's not that windy on the South Pole today. What actually happens when you run an import in Python? Python, an import is actually happening at runtime. So the Python interpreter is executing code. This is kind of the same as running a for loop or running any other arbitrary code. The import is something the interpreter has to do while the program is running. The interpreter needs to figure out where the module actually lives. So when you say import requests, you're not telling it where on your laptop, where on your computer, the library actually lives. The interpreter is gonna go and figure that out for us and load it into memory so that it can use the APIs and all the other stuff. If we open up a, a REPL here with Python and we import sys, sys is not a library, it's a built-in, which means you never need to install it. We're gonna inspect a variable called sys.path. And sys.path is a list of strings. Each of these strings is gonna be a directory. If you ever worked with the path environment variable in Linux, then sys.path in Python should make a lot of sense to you. And like I mentioned, it's a list of directories. The first directory is actually the empty string, and that's gonna to correspond to the current directory, so the directory that you're invoking the Python interpreter from. There's a bunch of other directories that aren't as interesting, I will be honest, and then the last directory is the site packages directory. So what this list is, is it's a list of places for the interpreter to look for dependencies. So when you do import requests, the interpreter is first gonna check if it's a built-in. So a built-in would be like sys or OS, some of these other built-in libraries that you never need to install. If it's not a built-in, then it's going to loop through all of the entries in this list, and it's going to look for a folder or file with the same name as what you're importing. First, let's uninstall requests, because we're gonna play around with this. Let's uninstall requests. Confirm that that worked. PyCharm is, is complaining about the import. And if I run it, we're getting the module not found error. I uninstall the request library. And then if I go and add a file called requests.py into uh, my project here. So I have an empty file called request.py. And I'm actually going to print out, hey guys. So I'm going to print some, some fun stuff out. If I run this, well, first of all, before I run this, notice that PyCharm has stopped complaining about the import. If I go and run it, I get this weird error on line 11 here, which says, hey, request does not have a method called get in it. So that's a little weird. And then if we actually scroll up, we're gonna see that this hey guys that I added in that print statement actually got printed out. So why don't we set a breakpoint here? And then we're gonna debug this. And if we do this, we're gonna notice that yes, we are in here. Yes, the interpreter is actually running this code. And if we scroll up in the stack, we're gonna see that we're actually on this import. So this is what I mean when I say that an import is actually executing code. You could stop it in the debugger and poke around and see what's happening. So the interpreter, which again is going to loop through in order this list to look for a match for requests, is first gonna look in the current directory. And because there was a file called request.py to the interpreter, it said, yeah, this exists. The import was completely good and let's go ahead and proceed. And it was able to do the import, and that's again why you're gonna see printed out here this hey guys, because that code actually ran. But the error popped up because this method does not exist on this request library, because this is not the request library, this is just a file called request.py. So now let's actually go in and pip install requests. So pip install requests. And as I do that, okay, let's rerun it. It should work, right? Because we pip installed requests. Well, not really, because if we look down here, we're getting that exact same error. And if we look up here, hi, hey guys is getting printed out again. Unfortunately, the interpreter is importing this fake request library that I added locally, and it's not picking up the request library that pip installed. So what's happening here again is the interpreter is looping through in order. And because the first entry is the current directory or the empty string, and because my current directory has a file called request.py, 
the interpreter is going to pick that. It cannot import the library more than once. That doesn't work in Python. And so because it found it in the first place it looked, or it found something that would pass for it in the first place it looked, it's actually going to use that. And now if we actually change the name of this, so if I change this to, uh, I don't know, my request, my request.py, run it. And now this actually works. So now it finally worked. So now the question is, well, where are the files for the request library? So they, they weren't in my current directory. That didn't make sense. That's not where pip puts the files. But now clearly they're somewhere on my machine because we were able to run the script and get the weather in the South Pole. There's a command that you maybe don't know about that I really like. It's called pip freeze. So pip freeze. Pip freeze is going to print out all of the dependencies that are currently installed. And it's going to print out the version. So we can see here that we have requests version 2.32.3. Where does pip freeze know this? And where does the interpreter actually look to find the request library? Again, you would go into sys.path and I'm gonna tell you guys right now that site packages is where pip installs its dependencies. And so on my machine here, since I'm using a virtual environment, we're gonna look under VM, lib, Python 3.12 site packages. And on the left-hand side here, we're going to see one directory for every dependency that we have installed. So again, the output of pip freeze is, looks like one, two, three, four, five, libraries and we see certify certify char set normalizer char set normalizer idna idna and requests requests so this is where pip actually goes to install the dependencies and if we look in requests here we can see that we actually have the code and again if we put a breakpoint into this file so the init file is going to get run when we do the import and we run this in the debugger we're going to hit this breakpoint this code is actually running at import time and again, if we look at the call stack, we are on line one. We are on the import request line. That's what's happening here. Another question you might have is, well, how does pip freeze work? How does pip freeze know what version is actually installed? How did it determine 2.32.3? When you install a package in Python, you need the actual code. So in the case of requests here, we can see the .py files are under the request folder. But also you probably want some metadata about the package. So the version, maybe when it was published, authors, stuff like that. And the dist info directory is gonna contain all of that metadata. And there's a file called metadata. And this is where you're gonna find stuff like the name of the module, the version, uh, I guess a summary. Honestly, you would never really look at this stuff, but there is a version here, let's try to change it. Let's put 300, let's run it again. And no, so that didn't do it either. The third place where the version appears is actually in the directory name. And why don't we try renaming the directory and see what happens. So let's go and copy this file. So, and then we are gonna move, which is a rename, and we're gonna change it to 302.3. So we're gonna do that. And if we look over in PyCharm, notice that this dist, dist info directory got renamed. And now let's run a pip freeze. And yes, finally, we see that the version of the request library got updated here. Finally, this got updated. So weirdly enough, pip freeze is actually reading the versions from the dist info directories and it's grabbing the version number that's encoded in there. Note that this didn't actually affect the code that's installed. This had no impact on the code that's installed because I didn't actually change the Python files in the request directory. And to prove to you guys that it didn't, I can rerun this script and it works just fine. What happens if I remove this dist info directory? So why don't we go ahead and remove that rm-rf. Let's look over here. We'll notice that the dis info directory is now gone. And now if we run a pip freeze, the request library is actually missing. So when you ask pip freeze is request installed, it's going to say no. Let's see what happens when we run the script. Script still works just fine. And it shouldn't be that surprising again, because in our site packages directory, we still have the files for the request library. So just because we're missing the, the information about who wrote the library and the website doesn't mean we can't run the code. Works just fine. Let's reinstall requests. So now we have the request library in our site packages and we have the dist info directory. And now what I'm gonna do is remove the actual code. So let's remove this and let's ask pip freeze. Is request installed? It is. Pip freeze says yes. Okay. And let's go to demo and let's run it. Now we're getting a module not found error again. So the interpreter, again, is not reading the dist info directory. It doesn't care about the metadata. It just cares if the code is there. Pip freeze is reading the metadata. And so what's happening here is the request library, I deleted the code, but the dist info directory is there. And so pip is saying, yeah, you're good to go. And now, for instance, and now actually, if I try to do a pip install, this is actually, this is a very bad state to get your project in because if I do a pip install request here, 
if I do a pip install request here, it actually is saying, hey, the, the requirement's already satisfied. And if we look over here, it didn't install a new request directory. And now if I run this, I'm getting the same error because pip actually thinks the library is there. It's not looking at the code directory. It didn't detect that, hey, you're missing the request directory that has the actual code. It went and looked at that dist info directory and said, yep, you're good, go right ahead. So when I did a pip install, it didn't work. So what I would actually wanna do is pip uninstall requests, yes, and then pip install requests. And now it was able to actually get that code and now I can actually run it. But anyway, why should you care about this? Like, why does it matter how dependencies work in Python? Don't we have AI now? Can't you just have ChatGPT fix all this stuff for you? The answer is yes, of course, AI is gonna help you. And no, you shouldn't be manually installing Python packages or modifying anything in site packages, really. That's not a good use of your time, but understanding how this stuff works and understanding that it's really just files and directories and understanding that the Python code that you install has to actually be somewhere and that the interpreter has to be able to find it. These are just fundamental concepts for understanding how Python works and how programming works in general. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so much time is wasted in software engineering, dealing with dependencies, dealing with environments and other stuff like this that has nothing to do with actually coding. A lot of times in software engineering, being successful is really just a game of not wasting time. Being able to actually write code all day instead of fighting with your dependencies and fighting with pip. And yeah, of course AI is gonna help. And of course, a lot of these problems, you don't need to like, find an obscure forum with an answer from 12 years ago, you can probably just ask ChatGPT or whatever and it'll tell you. But having an intuition for what's actually going on with these dependencies will mean that you, one, just don't need to waste your time going to ChatGPT or reading forums. You'll be able to just figure it out on your own. And two, these concepts apply regardless of the language. So pip is a package manager specifically for Python. Node.js and JavaScript, they use NPM. Java uses stuff like Maven. And all of the specifics are different, all the commands are a little different, but all of the concepts are generally similar or the same. So if you're really good at understanding dependencies in Python and now you gotta to switch to JavaScript, yes, of course, there's specifics that are different. No, it's not exactly the same, but all of these concepts are relevant. And a lot of the issues you'll see in Python, a lot of the dependency issues you'll see in Python, you'll see in all these other languages too. So it really is just like a fundamental part of software engineering is having the right code available to you that you need to run your app. I am saying that it doesn't take that much time to get competent at this dependency stuff and getting good will pay off. Like, believe me, the time it takes to get good at this stuff is so low given the reward that you'll get. And you'll, if you're working at a company, most people do not take the time to really understand how dependencies work. And if you understand this even decently well, you'll quickly become the person that everybody comes to when they've been banging their head against the wall for four hours and don't want to admit it and need you to help them out. It's, it's really shocking to me that people don't know this stuff because it's not that complicated. Like this is not rocket science. This is not glamorous work. It's not fun, honestly, to deal with dependencies. It's not really cutting edge. It's not brand new artificial intelligence or anything fun, but it's just so fundamental and you can't be above this kind of work. You can't be above this kind of knowledge because this is really the nuts and bolts of how we actually get stuff done with software. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Would appreciate if you drop me a like. See you next time.